Welcome back to our Ibu Chess YouTube channel. Today's class, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful keyhole bustier yoke blouse with hanging draped sleeve. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So you can follow us on all social media at Library Treasure on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, as well as Facebook. Okay, so to make this, I've drafted my mini basic bodies. This is my shoulder, 14 divided by 2, which is 7. Then I created my shoulder slope, my armhole line. So this is my armhole, this is my bust point, the under bust, and the waistline. Okay, so after this, I'm going to get my bust span, which is also the nipple to nipple measurement. Or you can just, because this has a yoke. So we can just create our neckline okay so before the yoke is a very deep sweetheart neckline so you first note how deep you want it to be so for me i think i'm going to be working with around nine inches depth yours can be more or less depending on what you want so i'm just going to mark it there and then on your arm pull you measure how deep you want that to be as well so for me i think around five inches is fine for me there so once you have that you connect from here to here using your curved ruler to form your sweetheart neckline so this is what i have so now this is the neckline that i am going to work with for my bodies so the next thing is to create your dart okay so for the dart my bust span is 8 inches divided by 2 it's going to give me 4 inches so i might 4 inches here 4 inches here as well so i'm going to make it into a straight line up to my neckline depth this line okay remember this upper part is going to be our yoke so after that i'm going to take it out of one inch on both sides on the waistline as well as the under bust and then i'll make it into a straight line then I'm going to use my curve ruler to connect that to my boss points so you're not going to be connecting directly here you can see how I just blend it in so that you won't be having any sharp point there so make sure you blend it in properly and then you draw it out so for my tightening I'm just going to measure half an inch on both sides and then I'm going to connect that as well to the bust point just like this so you make sure to reconcile the length that you have there because I'm going to sew it together so here I have an three and a quarter so it's a little bit higher here so I have like three and a half inches here so I'm just going to instead this by the half an inch and reconnect it so we are doing this so that when we're connect when we're sewing them together it's going to be equal i'm not going to have any issue so what i have here okay so now let's talk about the neckline remember i did not draw out my neckline because i'm still going to modify it so this has like almost like an altar neckline okay so this is where my natural neckline stops you can maintain that but i just want this a little bit wider so i'm going to increase it by one inch and that will make it four inches okay so for my shoulder okay i'm going to just have like a strap there one inch so that by the time i turn it in with bias i'm just going to be left with around half an inch or quarter of an inch so one inch is fine for me and then you can see i have like two inches extra here which i'm not going to need so now from this one inch now i'm going to reconnect my ham hook so like i said it's just in form of a is a form of an halter neckline so reconnecting my handful now i'm going to have this okay and then for my neckline depth i'm going to work with three inches and then i'm going to connect that as well to my new neck width okay so you can see the neckline that we have there so now the one inch that i took here i want to extend it and then I'm going to reconnect my handful as well. So after taking care of all of this, I'm going to draw my bust, my 
my I'm going to measure my bust. So the bust I'm working with is 38 divided by 4 is 9 and a half. And then I'm adding one inch seam allowance there. Okay. So whatever inches that you feel you may lose here, you can add it back. So for my waist, my waist is 28 divided by 4 is 7. So I have 3 inches here. I'm going to continue it here and then add my seam allowance here as well. So after connecting like that, I'm going to connect my side seam. Okay. So I like to work with bust that a lot. So I'm going to include my bust out of two inches there, and then bust that just like you to contour to contour your under bust very well. You're not going to be having anything packing there. So that's why I, I love to work with it. So that's my bust that now. I'm talking. I'm taking care of all my that. So the last thing to do now is the keyhole that we have on the neckline. So for the keyhole, from my neck depth, that's where my neck depth stops. I'm going to go down by half an inch which is this and then from my neck from where my yoke depth stop which is here i'll go up by two inches as well this is what i want doesn't really have any stated line um, any stipulated measurements you should work with so to create this keyhole i'm going to locate the midpoint of these two lines and then i'm going to go in by half an inch or quarter of an inch i don't want this too wide remember this is still on foot if you use one inch it's going to open up by two inches and you're still going to turn it so it may be too wide that's what i'm working with just quarter of an inch to a quarter of an inch which is 0.75 which is this then i'm going to take my curved ruler and link all of these points together so after linking the points together now you have your key neckline and then we quickly move to the back so i'm just trying to get a perfect curve here and i have this so this is my keyhole the front is done now so we'll move to the back so for the back it's very simple i already drafted my back bodies as we have seen so the first thing i will do is to increase the neck depth just like i did for the front by, by neck width by one inch and then i'll measure another one inch for my i'll measure another one inch for my neck for my for my neckline for my shoulder sorry then i'm going to connect this so i'm going to be using this upper part from the chest line for my yoke for the back okay you can measure more or less depending on what you want but from where my chest line stops which is my arm on line here i'm just going to use that as my yoke okay so now the next thing is to connect this neckline as well to your arm hole you are going to reconnect it just like we did for the front so reconnecting it now this is what we have so the neck depth i'm working with for the back is going to be two inches and then i'm going to connect these two inches to my to my neck point which is this so now if we look very well there's like a keyhole at the back as well so for this keyhole i'm just going to connect from here to here with the head of my ruler okay so if you are working with loops if you want to lace it up at the back then you're going to consider maybe measuring one inch for your modesty panel if you're having a modesty panel like we have it the thumbnail you can measure one inch here and then connect it then your keyhole is going to stop here as well okay but because this is going to be a zipper you can see me stopping where my zipper allowance stops so here i'm just going to take my curved ruler and then connect this for my back keyhole okay so this upper part here is going to be your yoke Remember, this is your new hampo. You don't need it any longer. And this front here as well. This is going to be our yoke. So I'm going to cut them out now. And then we can move this to our fabric. Okay, so I'm cutting this now. Like I said, this is going to be my new hampo. So I'm cutting along this new hampo line. Okay. So I'm going to cut out my keyhole for the back as well now make it wider if that is what you want and then i'm going to cut out the neckline 
okay so this is the shape for the back you just need to cut this upper part as your yoke so now i'm going to close my my dart here and then i'm going to hold it with a masking tape so this is the back for the front just like i did for the back i'm going to remove my yoke as well okay remember we went up here okay so this is the yoke i'm going to cut out my new my new handful okay so here because of the going up that we did i'm going to add a new paper or i'm just going to blend it in when i'm cutting it on my fabric so that's not going to affect it okay so i'm going to cut out my shoulder slope my neckline as well as my keyhole then for my bust here i'm going to close the bust that as well so i'm sure by now we know how to do all of this okay so this is the yoke for the front so now i'm going to cut out our bust here and close our bust that as well so i've cut this out now and then on my bust that i'm just going to close it up like this and hold it with my tape so now I'm going to be cutting this with my lace fabric and then I'm going to be cutting my yoke, both of my yoke with my neck fabric. I'll do this and then bring it back for us to continue. Okay, so I'm going ahead to cut this on my main fabric. This is the, the center front, this is the side front. I cut two linings, one for lining the fabric itself and the other one for turning. Okay, so this is the lace I'm working with and this is the back okay so now for my yoke i'm using this nude net but you should find a matching color of net so i'm just going to be turning it with bias but you can cut two of it to turn it out i can see that i've cut all of this out including my keyhole so the front the, the front yoke should be cut on fold so that by the time you turn it out you have something like this so you can see our keyhole is small so it's better for it to be small especially because this is a net and it has a tendency of stretching so if it's small it's, you can still increase it but if it's too big you may not be able to do anything to it so i prefer it like this so now the next thing to do now is to start sewing them together i'm going to start by sewing my bust my that together like this both the main fabric and lining you don't need to sew anything on the back because we already closed up the that so i'll go ahead and sew them together now before bringing them back so and also i'm going to try to turn this with a bias if i see a machine color of bias if i have this color i'm going to use it to turn it here and also turn it there so i'm going to do that and bring it back to show us Okay, so I've gone ahead to join the dart for the front as you can see this is the main bodies and this is the lining and also for my two yoke I'm using a nude net okay so nude net is like a skin tone net which is not going to be so feasible that's why I decided to use this color of bias to pipe it okay I use the color of the of the dress so that by piping it is going to make it bolder just like you are seeing so piping this is just going to make it bolder so the next thing is to add the yoke to the lower body so i'm going to sew it so when i'm sewing this i made sure that my yoke is like half an inch away from here because i'm still going to add the angling hanging sleeve to this for it to match up like this so please take note of that i'll go ahead now and add the yoke to both the front and the back then i'm going to turn it out with my linings then i'll bring it back to show us what we have okay so i'm going ahead to sew it to the to the yoke you can see and then i turned it out with the lining so after sewing it you just place your lining and then use it to flip it over like this same thing i did for the back as well so i decided to just turn the sides of the back as well so after sewing my yoke i just placed my lining exactly same way making sure that the yoke is between the lining and the main bodies and then i sew it around so that i can neatly turn it so i've gone ahead to turn it neatly and this is what i have the last thing to do now is to join them together by the side so i'm just going to go ahead and join it with the allowance that i left okay so i've gone ahead to join it on the sides by the allowance that i left 
this is what i have so far so if you turn it out this is what it looks like okay so about the piping like i was explaining earlier because this is a skin tone net you can see i just added this color of bias i used it to pipe it so that it will be obvious that this has a yolk if not it's just going to blend in with the skin okay so this is what it looks like now the only dip, the only thing now that made differently was i was not sure if i was going to add this hanging sleeve to it so if you are going to be adding the hanging sleeve to yours it's better for you to let your yolk start from stop where your angling sleeve is going to start remember this is not so strong so you may not be able to carry the weight of the sleeve so it's better for the main fabric to go up just like we have it in front so instead of maintaining your your chest line as your yoke you can just measure five inches downwards and then start your yoke from there just like we did for the front as well i hope you understand that and I, my bias was not enough so that was why i could not pipe the back like this but you should just pipe the back exactly the same way we pipe the front so that can, so just what i was saying because there was no piping here you can see that it's not really obvious like what we have in front so the piping is just going to help it really stand out so the next thing to do now is to fix our sleeve so to fix this sleeve now remember it's a cold shoulder sleeve this upper part is already taken care of so now to fix the sleeve on this lower part you're going to measure what you have there from here to your to where your seam line is so i have around five inches there okay so this five inches i don't want the sleeve to be too big i'm just going to multiply it by around two and that's going to give me 10 inches because you're going to be pleating it okay so so for the other measurement you just measure the bicep that you're going to be placing this that's the flat part of the of the ham so you can see what i have i have around eight inches there and the measurement is firm so i'm just going to multiply this by one and a half or two inches depending on how big you want it to be so multiplying by one and a half is going to give you 16 okay if you're multiplying it by multiplying by two is going to give you 16 and multiplying by one and a half is going to give you around 12 inches so on food this is what it's going to look like so i think i prefer the 16 inches if it's too big i'll still reduce it so now i have my interfacing on my fabric already remember the first measurement we took that's the one we are pleating that was 10 inches so i cut out the fabric of 13 inches so that after i turn it i'll still have around so i decided to add two to it and then for the length on fold here i'm working with eight inches okay so that by the time i open it up it's going to be 16 inches so i'm going to cut off the excess so now i'll cut another one to line this remember there is an interfacing here so for the interfacing i'm just using a gum stick because it's an hanging sleeve it needs to be really strong to stand on its own so i'm using this gum stick because this is what i have but we're going to make in this you can use a color stick or a peplum stick just something really strong and then you can just add your your boning at the edges here just for it to be able to stand on its own okay so that it can help it stand but this is just a tutorial i'm just going to make sure to double this gum stick because it's not so strong i'll put it on the lining as well so that i can stand a bit so i've cut out the lining the next thing is for me to sew it so that i can i'm going to sew it on this upper part that's the part that is going to show so that's the part the part we cut on food 16 inches okay so this 16 inches i'm going to show here and here and leave this side because this is the side i'm pleating and i've been starting to my hamper okay so i've sewn it on both ends the next thing now is to turn it out and give it a good press okay so after ironing it you're going to pleat it okay you iron it really really flat so like i said you can use your boning to strengthen it on the two edges so that it can help it stand a bit so when i fold it this is what i have and i'm okay with this but once it's bigger you just need to increase it remember i multiply that bicep and i did not take it round to the ham it's just that outer part that i took so you should be mindful of how you're taking your measurement to guide you in knowing the amount of fabric you're going to work with so now the next thing is for me to pleat this to my actual size okay i'm going to place it remember i started with five inches that's my so i've pinned this to the original size now the next thing is for me is to take it and sew it to the armhole 
just like this so i'll take it to the sewing machine now and then sew it to the arm or with the half an inch remember we left half an inch after inserting our yoke so i'm going to sew it with the half an inch on both sides to the main body so the sleeve is sewn now you can see it's in form of a cold shoulder sleeve and you can see the space that i have there it's not so wide okay so if you want yours wider you can make it wider so this is what it looks like and this is a keyhole and the neckline of our main dress and i piped the armhole area with the buyers as well so once you sew it with the half inch you can see the half inch here it's just going to fold in like this and then blend well with what you have already so you just need to search this part or you just cover it up with a wire so that it can be neat as well so this is what the full view of the dress looks like and i hope you enjoyed making it just like i enjoyed making with you so the same way you created the sleeve here is the same way you're going to create the other sleeve as well i'll see you in the next one bye